what's up guys war here welcome back to the channel so today we are going to be bringing you probably the king of the necro builds and that is bone spear bone spear is still arguably the best skill in the game so i'm gonna bring you my bones uh spear variant and just kind of show you everything that you need from your gear paragon board vampiric powers and everything you need for it so let's get right into it so as we all know bone spear since the dawn of diablo 4 as well as probably Diablo 3, has just been the best ability. It did suffer a slight nerf, not only to the skill, but more importantly to the key passive, um, Ossified Essence, which is slightly worse than it is now, but it is still super strong, okay? This is going to still dominate everything that you need in the game, from Nightmare Dungeons to level 100, all the end game content, and especially Lilith. This is probably the easiest Lilith killer in the game. But let's go over everything that you need um, for the build. It's pretty it's pretty simple, guys. It didn't change too much, even from last season or season zero. But there is a few things that you could do differently, and I'm going to go over those as we go along. So, of course, we're doing bone splinters into Acolyte's bone splinters. Um, you could do um, initiates to make things vulnerable, but we want the increased critical strike chance. We want to be able to just have as much critical strike chance as possible just to annihilate everything on the board. Then we're going to come down and we're going to take Unliving Energy to max our Essence. And then perfectly balanced to have Bone Spear cost more, but it's going to deal more uh, damage. Then, of course, we got Bone Spear maxed up into Supernatural. You can do this to make them vulnerable, but honestly, I think Paranormal is probably just better for the increased critical strike chance. And then if you do crit, you fire two more additional Bone Shards upon destroying them. I think this is just incredibly powerful. It's just better especially now with the vampiric powers and how easy it is to actually make enemies vulnerable. In the past, you probably take paranormal, or excuse me, supernatural to make things vulnerable easier, but now because of all the curses and everything, it's just super easy to make stuff vulnerable. Um, next, we got huge flesh. So on a lucky hit, we have a chance to create a corpse. You probably tone this down to 8% chance and kind of put points somewhere else, but um, I kind of like this just to create corpses because we do need those. Then we have Blood Mist into Ghastly to create a corpse. This is our only crowd control, you know, immune protector. This is pretty much on almost every single Necro build in the game. Just a way to get out, give you some um, some life, and deal some corpse explosion damage. One point into corpse explosion. So when we pop this, the only reason that we're doing corpse explosion is so that we can have one point in Grim Harvest to regenerate essence, which isn't necessary because of our gear and then have increased damage from fuel death now what we could do is do this and just kind of max it just for nine percent multiplicative damage for six seconds so this is kind of cool this is literally the only reason we do this i'm actually toying around with the concept of not using these three and not doing corpse explosion at all because of how much essence regeneration we have and doing something like iron maiden or doing something like decrepify um, just to kind of reduce cooldowns or even Iron Maiden because then we swap out all this and we can just put two points here So Iron Maiden no longer costs essence, but we gain five essence for each enemy curse Which would not only make our essence regeneration even better But allow us to when we do get hit they take damage over 10 seconds, which is pretty cool and the curses happen a lot faster than corpse explosion in my opinion, but um, It's just kind of one of the things you can just tap and go because the the curse is so long, but you know, we're going to keep it with Corpse Explosion for now. Then, of course, we're doing three points into Death's Embrace as well as Death's Reach. We're doubling up here just because we can be ranged with this build and we can also be up close. Um, so we maximize our damage there. Then we're doing Corpse Tendrils into Plague Corp Tendrils for the vulnerability. Then we're taking our three best bone skills, which is going to be Serration for more crit strike chance. Then we're taking Compound Fracture to deal even more damage and then avulsion for our bone skills deal even more increased critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies okay you don't really need rapid you don't really need this at all because the only cooldown that we're really concerned about is probably bone storm but you don't need that one then we're going to come down to our ultimates we're taking spire and leader for attack speed we're taking standalone for damage reduction as well as memento mori to increase our sack bonuses on our minions then, of course, we're doing Bone Storm. The reason we take this is for the increased crit strike chance, as well as damage reduction while we're moving around. Then, of course, Ossified Essence, arguably one of the best passive skills in the game. 
This allows us to do increased damage for each point of essence we have upon 50 above cast. Our essence is 165. It actually can be a lot better. I just don't have perfected gear or min-max gear. But as long as you're above 50, ossified essence is just going to trigger. And with as much resource generation that we have, this is very, very strong. Okay, so let's go over uh, gear real quick. We're doing Deathless Visage, guys. It leaves an echo that travels to deal additional damage, but increases our... Um, Increases our damage by up to 30% of our critical strike damage bonus, which is just huge. We got disobedience for more armor. We're doing splintering. This is key for the build because it makes enemies vulnerable. Uh, Bone Spear's primary attack. Bone Spear's primary attack makes enemies hit beyond the first vulnerable for 2.3 seconds. And then bone shards for them deal increased bonus damage. So this is another way that we can become vulnerable. That's why in the past, you do paranormal because the first hit makes them vulnerable and then the subsequent hits make them vulnerable as well. Then we got a uh, shielding storm here. We, each time that bone storm damages the enemy, we get a barrier just to survive more because we only have 12k life. Then ghost walkers here. Typically, I would do wind strikers here for every time we crit, we get increased movement speed, which is really good. But with the new vampiric power metamorphose to make us unstoppable, this just allows us to be unstoppable for eight total seconds and the increased move speed is insane. But more importantly, we're able to move freely through enemies, so we're never hindered whatsoever. Then on our flame our, our, our sword here, we're doing um, serration. The ossified essence key passive also increases your crit strike damage, which is huge. Then in our offhand, we're doing edge masters. You have a lot of flex here in some of the gear pieces, guys. You could do edge masters. You could do uh, the one where when you're dealing damage with a basic, it increases your core skill i've also toyed a lot around with um littlest wall littlest wall is actually very strong in this build guys you can do either one they're both very very strong i just like the additional crit strike chance and essence cost reduction but Lulis wall is very very strong in this build if you have it next in our amulets we're doing grasping veins so they increase crit strike chance when we actually hit somebody with tendrils and then this right here is the big reason why our essence re regeneration is through the roof okay crit strikes by our bone skills which is going to happen all the time increases our essence regeneration by 154 percent i don't even have this maxed out but 154 percent each time we crit each time we crit with any bone skill we get that and it just stacks so our essence regeneration is through the roof now if you don't have circle of torment you can also run exposed flesh this is what i i have on right now Okay, and then on a lucky hit, you have a 10% chance on that lucky hit to generate up to 50% or 50 essence when hitting a vulnerable enemy. So there's a couple things with Exposed Flesh that ever since I got my Torment, I just I want to swap this off. You can use this, guys, but I'm going to give you a few options to kind of swap out if you don't like this. Now, one, we have to get a lucky hit. Thankfully, our lucky hit on Bone Spear is 50%, so that's every other hit, roughly. And then on that lucky hit, we got a chance to regenerate our essence. So in theory, with both of these, our essence is through the roof. You should never run out. Hardly ever. Okay, now if you just want to use Torment and just use Torment, then there's a lot of options here that you can do. My mate, my biggest one is probably doing Accelerating. Accelerating is the one where you increase your, um, you increase your uh, critical strikes with core skills, increase your attack speed, so you just fire more. You also have um, Conceited here. You can do increased damage while you have a barrier. So Conceited on this pairs really well with Lidless Wall because we're always going to have Bone Storm going. Okay, another really good option is to have Sacrificial. So that way it increases our sacrifice bonuses by another X percent, which is pretty strong. So you have a lot of options here, guys. I had Exposed Flesh first, and then once I got my Torment, I just stacked them both. So you have a lot of options here, just throwing that out there. Um, so yeah, then we have rubies in, emeralds, rubies, just to max out in diamonds. In our Book of the Dead, we're sacrificing our skirmishers for crit chance. Our mages were sacking for increased vulnerability damage. And then golems were sacking for crit strike damage. Okay. Now, let's get into our vampiric powers because there's a lot of options here. And there's a lot to kind of go over with this. So I've tested out a few of these. It just kind of depends on what you like. So I have Metamorphose. This is a given. You should always run this, okay? When you evade, you turn into a cloud of bats, becoming unstoppable. 
and then you apply a vampiric curse. Okay, now I have multiple evade triggers. Okay, so I can evade four times or three times. Well, essentially four times. And every time I dash like that, not only do my ghost walkers trigger, but I'm able to make every enemy I hit vulnerable. Okay, with a curse. I apply a curse to them. Now this pairs with prey on the weak because we do increase vulnerability damage. And then enemies are vulnerable when they're affected by a curse, which would be we would be applying met by metamorphose. Now there's one other one that you could do. Now I'm testing Moonrise, but you can swap Moonrise out and do and do um where is it? A cursed touch. So then you have an even bigger lucky hit chance because then every other time you hit, you have a 44% chance to inflict a curse. And then the curse will automatically make them vulnerable and then it spreads. So you can do a cursed touch. This pairs really well with Prey on the Weak. So this is an option. So you could do these three in tandem. I'm just testing out Moonrise. I think Moonrise is really fun for just even more attack speed and move speed. Now, next, we're doing Sanguine Embrace. This is key to this build because we are rad, rather fragile, fragile. So when we kill, we fortify, which is huge. And then while we're fortified, the crit strike chance. So very good for the build. We want to stack that as much as possible. And this will help keep us alive. Then we have Ravenous on a lucky hit. We increase our um, attack speed for 40% of our total move speed. Very good. So really, these four are the main ones. And you really have a flex slot. So if you can make enemies vulnerable enough by moving with Metamorphose, then I definitely suggest running Moonrise. You could also really run Hemomancy, which is probably one of the best vampiric powers in the game. Your attacks deal 80% of your max life as physical damage. Now, our max life is only 12,000 or 11,000, I should say. So it's good, but not great on our blood orb or blood surge builds and our blood builds where you know we're up to 20k 22,000 life so it's much better but even so this still deals a lot of damage um, or you can run moonrise for the increased attack speed and move speed so and then you also like you could really run anything else in here that you think you would like so if there's anything else that you really would like to test out you really have a solid flex spot but i'm rocking moonrise just to see how it goes so now let's get into the Paragon board, guys. We're going to go over this really, really quick. I'm going to leave a build link to everything down in the description below. Straight to Mobilytics. Big shout out to Mobilytics for being sponsored on the channel. And all of your one-stop shop for all of your Diablo 4 guides for Season 2. Okay, so we're doing um, Gravekeeper here, okay, for increased damage, armor, intelligence. We're going to come up and do Bone Graft. This is the main legendary node that you're going to need. And we're taking... Um, exploit for even more vulnerability damage which is huge then we're going to come over and grab our sense of death for increased damage and damage reduction with corpses and we're taking imbiter for even more damage while we're healthy this should always be active especially with our um fortify from our vampiric power then we're going to come up and take flesh eater consuming five corpses increases damage by 40 percent this is really really good um it's just being active on casting your corpse explosion and we're taking um, Sacrificial. I need to get this thing leveled up. But we're doing damage to everything. We have it set. We just need to level it up. And then last but not least is Essence. Also have to level this up to 15 for even more crit strike damage. Uh, to not only normal, but to healthy enemies. So guys, that is the build. Bone Spear is still well into effect. It is super, super strong. You just kill everything. And it dies. You can see we're doing a level 74 now. No problem whatsoever. Just to test it. And again, you just you just destroy everything. The build is so insane. And with, with the amount of attack speed that I have, we like very rarely... We should be killing things before they can even touch us. But obviously, I don't have everything leveled up. But you just slap Again, guys, this will do all endgame content. This will do absolutely everything that you need in the game. And you guys can see that even though I'm, like, spamming Bone Spear, look at my essence. It just regens. Like, my regen is just nuts right now. And I'm just spamming. It's just nuts. Like, how much it actually... I missed a lot of shots right there. Don't judge me. 
YouTube for my accuracy. You guys can see that like having the extra vulnerable damage is good. So even with Moonrise, we still might go back to the um, to uh, a cursed touch just to guarantee it. Because right now the only way to do it is Metamorphose. So from a distance, it's really not that great. So we might just go back and do a cursed touch here. We would have to add some for it to trigger. But yeah, that's the build, guys. Like the video, comment down below what you guys think about Bone Spear with all of the changes. It's still arguably one of the best builds, if not the best build for Necromancer in Season 2, even with the slight nerf. So let me know what you guys think about that. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.